Hello, 6303. In this video, we're going to continue discussing the review of literature, but this time we are going to look at the critique of empirical studies section, as well as the gaps in the literature section. You will need to write these after you have completed writing both of your themes for your review of literature. There's two resources you need. It's the same resources from the last video. Student A's sample paper, which you can find in the Module 3 folder, and the trait checklist for a review of literature. I want you to read the Critique of Empirical Studies before I start breaking this part down. So pause the video and take a moment to do that. It runs down all the way through the next header titled Gaps in the Literature. If we look at the first paragraph, both qualitative and quantitative research addressing the significance of creating an LGBT inclusive school environment were abundant in this review of literature. Henshaw provided valuable information on the success of LGBT teacher training in regards to lowering the rate of LGBT bullying in schools. Although the study is from England, it shows that education and training could possibly make a positive difference in the United States as well. Okay, so let's start to break down this first paragraph. We'll see in the topic sentence for the introduction, um, student A talks about qualitative and quantitative research studies. And I want you to notice that when she talks about those studies, she includes the citations for the studies she's referring to. Same with quantitative. She includes the studies that she includes the studies that she is referring to. So the opening sentence basically says, hey, I looked at both qualitative and quantitative studies and I'm attaching what those studies are. And then she says she um, she goes to Henshaw and focuses on teacher training in regards to lowering the rate of LGBT bullying um, because she's going to develop this later on in the critique section. Um, you'll also notice that she talks about the regions that they're in because she's going to go develop that later on in the section. So anything that you introduce to your reader, you should then go in and develop as you move through that section. Um, so here she's hitting on that region of where the research is and she brings up the point that she also mentions how long the study was. All of these are different elements of research design. She's not just talking about one element, she's hitting on multiple elements. Here you can see that she's talking about journal entries and interview questions because she's covering the type, the methodology that the researchers use, the instrumentation, that kind of thing. Here again, she hits on the time before, during, and after training sessions. She's basically recapping the research design for Goldstein's 2008 study. She then goes in to say that the researchers also requested further research um, in almost every research article, you're going to see the authors doing this. They'll say suggestions for future research or for further research, you should do this. Um, and so she highlights that and says we need to continue the work that these researchers started. She synthesizes these two resources together because she's hitting on the topic of LGBT students experiencing bullying. So she lumps these two together, but she still goes in and breaks down the different types of data that are being collected. She also says where the study took place. And notice she's following that APA format where she's like, here's what I'm gonna talk about, these two studies, Here's some specific information about these studies. Uh, here's why those studies were important. It's following APA paragraph format. In this paragraph, she does the same thing with two other articles that had um, some content in common. And again, she goes in and says, here's what they focused on. Um, here's some suggestions for future research. She goes in and talks about, she highlights in one or two sentences what the focus of the studies were and then she goes in and says here's um, some suggestions that they had for future research. And then finally in this section she 
has a concluding paragraph that summarizes like here's all the different things that they did here's what they said uh, was important here's what saturated the research that I read um, but here's what we still need to work on so if we go and look at the trait checklist for the whole review of literature and we look at their critique of empirical studies we'll say that the We'll see that this is also going to follow a level one heading according to the APA 7th edition manual. Um, it's going to have an introductory sentence or paragraph depending on how many sources you looked at that were qualitative and quantitative. Um, the types of studies read for the review are discussed and you should have both qualitative and quantitative. The section addresses the number of participants, the setting, the duration, like that kind of thing. The section's also going to discuss data collection methods or instruments. And there's some samples listed in the trait checklist of things you can talk about. And then you're briefly going to talk about the results of the study and whether or not they're statistically significant, they're generalizable, the researchers weren't finished, they suggested more research, like that kind of thing. The gaps in literature section is going to be considerably shorter than your critique section. It's also going to have a level one heading that says gaps in literature. It should have an introductory sentence or paragraph just like every section in your APA style paper. Its main job is to identify what gaps exist in the literature based on what you did not see when you were writing up your critique of empirical studies. So if you look at the sample here, you'll see it's about three paragraphs long for student A. Yours needs to be one to three paragraphs. That's going to depend on how many qualitative and quantitative um, articles that you read. And you need to make sure that you develop your thoughts. But again, topic sentence to start off with or introductory paragraph and then we build support for that. So basically what you do in this section is go back to all those suggestions for future research or analyze the methods used and say something like oh oh well I read a lot of quantitative studies but there really was only like one or two qualitative studies and we could really use some more information that goes deep and does an analytical analysis of um, some people's opinions or something like that. So you take those suggestions for future research and you pair that from what you saw was missing like your unanswered questions from doing this research and then you merge those together and you have your gaps in literature section. Please remember to include citations in this anytime you're talking about a study. You need to cite what that study is so that we know which one you're referring to. And last of all, you need to wrap it up with like, here's really what the next study needs to focus on. Offer your suggestion for future research. This is what you would take and turn into your own study if we were actually going to go through with a full proposal and a full research study. Okay, that's all for this video. Write up both those sections um, and get those submitted to this modules folder.